Thanks for watching. We appreciate you. Please, please subscribe. Every nine seconds, she did try to tell me something. A woman. Is assaulted or beaten in the U.S. She took that beating the week before. There is very little here at this Chevrolet apartment complex to remind you of the tragic intersection of three lives. Calls for help that came too late. Children scarred for life. Tarika Jones, Jaleesa Harris, and Kevin Reynolds left here in the most violent of ways. Their families and communities are still suffering. These people could be your family or friends. Prince George's County, where nearly a million people live, leads the state of Maryland in these kinds of tragedies. You're about to meet a mom who found out in the most painful way possible that it is not someone else's problem. I met with LaShawn Harris back in the spring and we were gonna sit down and talk about her daughter. It was pretty tough. And at that time, an interview was not part of the equation. Until about two months later, when she reached back to me, it was right around the time of her daughter Jaleesa's birthday. Breaking overnight in Prince George's County. You can see several patrol cars at these apartment complex. Trying to get some information on the people involved. I just looked at the TV and I said, God, just don't let that be my baby. Everyone listened when 22-year-old Jaleesa Walls Harris lifted her voice to sing. She unleashed her range in church, in contests, and in verse. She wanted to be a star and use her talents to help others, particularly her half-sister, Tarika Jones. Jaleesa's mom can't seem to shake one of her last conversations with her daughter, Jaleesa, and Tarika. There was a problem and Jaleesa's mom was trying to help. No woman deserves to be hit on. I don't care what. I said, you should never let yourself be beat up. Never. So T Jaleesa said, see, I told you, Tarika, my mother wouldn't be going for that. And so, and I was like, is it you? And she was like, no, no. And she was just quiet. What do you wish you had said to Tarika in that moment? But it was thunder. And I keep looking at the chair because that's what she was saying. And I would have kissed her and told her that I love you. You don't deserve this. You see, Jaleesa's mom had no idea that Tarika, her daughter's half-sister, was in trouble. 26-year-old Tarika Jones was a devoted mother of three young girls. By all accounts, she loved cooking meals and telling the world about her sweet babies on social media. A place that did not showcase this man, 30-year-old Kevin Reynolds, the father of her youngest daughter and former boyfriend. This season, find better ways to take on new terrain. Push well beyond cell range, always knowing where you go. Understanding they just had a strange relationship, a on and off relationship. And according to police documents, it was volatile at times. Tarika told Kevin she wanted to move on. Police think that sent Kevin into a jealous rage. Let me take you back to a night in February. Tarika called police for help two times that night. Kevin was supposed to drop their daughter off, but that handoff quickly turned violent. Here's what Tarika wrote in her witness statement to police. At like 6 p.m., Kevin's supposed to drop our daughter off to me, and when he got here, I went on the opposite side of the car to get my daughter. He rushed at me and grabbed me and threw me to the ground. He continued to pick me up and toss me. After I finally could get to my feet, I ran to my neighbor house and he took my phone and threw it because I said I was calling the police. More than an hour later, this happened. And we want to warn you, what you're about to hear is graphic. 
and some of the language is wrong. Everything is chaos out here in this parking lot. Tarika is here, Kevin is here, Kevin's mother is here, even the father of Tarika's other two daughters is here. And remember that police statement? Well, Tarika speculates this is why things got out of hand. She wrote, he must have thought that I called my other baby father, so he went to a truck and got a gun. As I seen him running towards me, I run towards my car to call the police. His mother came in the car to grab my phone saying, that's her son. Don't call the police. That you, Tarika refers to, is Kevin's mother. Kevin is arrested and charged with assaulting Tarika, but she's at a crossroads. She has three small girls to raise, and the man who helps her do that is in jail. Three weeks later, Tarika and Kevin are together again for a bond hearing. You're going to hear the actual audio of the courtroom proceedings. It didn't take long. Listen to how Judge Joseph Wright wrestles with and ultimately makes a decision that would change lives forever. Mr. Reynolds is currently being held in no bond. We're asking that you set a bond, Your Honor, um, to a $5,000 bond with a 10% option um, and pretrial release. I have had occasion to speak to Ms. Jones. She indicates that she is not in fear of him and that she, in fact, wants him home. The facts read as a fairly violent episode. And then if I look at his record, destruction, conviction for assault, which is what this case is actually charged as first year assault, another conviction for assault, the weapons conviction as well. He believes he got off on probation two days ago. Ms. Jones disputes some of the allegations and the statement of charges, Your Honor. I believe that a $5,000 bond is appropriate in this matter. I disagree. For all the reasons I've said, for public safety, for the record, for the, for the way the facts read. If I have that bond, maybe $20,000. So that's it. Kevin is out of jail. And Tarika, a young mother of three, had no idea what had been set in motion. So that brings us back to Jaleesa. She and her half-sister Tarika would sometimes go weeks or months without seeing each other. But Tarika reached out to Jaleesa after that parking lot incident with Kevin. Jaleesa came downstairs one day, all excited, um, and said, Mom, Mom, guess what? Guess who hit me up on Facebook? And I was like, who? And she said, it was Tarika. She said she misses me. And I miss her too, Mom. I was like, mm, okay. The sisters were supposed to hang out on a Monday night, just five days after Kevin got out of jail. Jaleesa's mom was concerned about Tarika's influence on her daughter. And I just said, just be careful. Just be careful. Guard your heart. I'm not just trying to hang on. I'm going to just after 10 p.m. on March 7th, police say Kevin knocked on the door of Tarika's Chevrolet apartment. He had a gun. He walked in and fired the shots, hitting Tarika and Jaleesa. They died under a kitchen table on the floor. Then Kevin fled, leaving Tarika's three girls, one of him, his own daughter, in the next room. It could have been worse. Tarika's grandmother lived there too. She wasn't prepared for what she was getting ready to see. No, not at all. She was coming back from my understanding from work, and this is what she came on to. And she said, Ree, what have you done to yourself? And Ree was underneath the table, all the girls were on the other side of the table, and they both slumped and, and like in a knot. The next day, Kevin's body was found 100 miles away in Hanover County, Virginia, slumped in his getaway car. 
shoes off with a gunshot to the head. In just a matter of hours, three people are dead. Tarika, Kevin, and Jaleesa, who was caught in the middle. I raised my kids to steer clear of it, but that in itself wasn't enough. The domestic violence fatality review team in Prince George's County points out all the signs that appear to be on the horizon between Tarika and Kevin. You've got this relationship with escalating tension and violence that Tarika was trying to end, lengthy contact with the justice system, family members who witnessed and knew about the abuse, and that recanted statement from the incident in February. Tarika needed Kevin to help pay the bills. And we do our level best every day to keep people safe. This is what we are here to do. Um, and in a case like this one where we fail to do that, it is our worst nightmare. An unforeseen turn of events because Tarika changed her story. What we knew was what she said. I'm not fearful. I'm okay with him coming home. If this didn't happen the way that the charging document says it happened, then I'm the person to know. This may be a turning point for the way Prince George's County handles these kinds of cases going forward. State's attorney Angela also works at MITS. Her office made a mistake. If there are certain convictions, a certain history, it doesn't matter what the victim says. His or her desire is, we have to make an objective decision that doesn't always include the victim. What the state's attorney is saying here is important. She's saying, we can't always listen to what the victims are saying because sometimes they don't realize how much danger they're in. She's saying we simply can't afford to do that anymore. It would have saved my daughter's life, who had nothing to do with it. I'm definitely mad. Because had he been in jail, my daughter would be here. We weren't allowed to talk to Judge Joseph Wright about what happened in his courtroom. Now, Patricia Bent Goodley is in charge of a team that reviews these cases in Prince George's County. In many of these cases, that perpetrator has made a decision that this is what's going to happen. And it's just a matter of when they execute it. It really does require us very early on talking about what does it mean to love someone? What does it mean to respect someone? When you don't see that, you need to pay attention to it. These women have all been caught in the spin cycle of domestic violence. They say healing starts with knowing what's broken in the first place. If I knew how to love, if I knew how to give love, I could have recognized um, where I was lacking. In the relationship. I just wish that more people will speak up. I thought I, he just adored me, where it was actually an obsession with me. Don't put yourself in that situation because not only will it affect you and that person, families get destroyed behind this. Look at us. 